Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Leanne here and today we are starting video one of something that I've been thinking about doing for a little while now. Now I make resin videos as you know, it's not the only craft that I do on my channel but I've been doing it for a while now and realised quite recently that I don't actually have any good beginner resin videos. I get asked all the time because I run a resin group on Facebook for simple steps in resin and I realised that I was kind of lacking in videos that could be helpful to somebody who was new to resin. So this is video one and an introduction to resin, the basics of resin supplies you'll need. This is just a resin piece that I'm holding here that I hope to recreate with you over the next few videos. It's a very simple simple piece with very basic techniques and this is where I'm going to start. I would really like it if you would pop some suggestions below of the kind of videos you would like to see in this series but I'm going to call this my resin step-by-step -step series basically teaching you from the very basics to the very end product of a piece of resin. Now this video is going to be about epoxy resin I have very old epoxy resin so my part B has turned really yellow but it still works just fine for videos like this and I will be replacing this as soon as I use this up. Now this is Mastercast 121 from Ellie Chem Resins and I've had this for a long time now. This is probably one of my main resins that I use and buy up whenever I finish it but there are many good quality resins on the market and I hope to be using different versions of resin in this coming year. This one is a 50-50, that means you take 50, sorry this make, means you take an equal part of A and an equal part of B and mix them together. Now before you start with resin there are a few simple supplies that you are going to need and I'm going to show them to you now. Okay, the first things that you are going to need with resin is some sort of mixing container. Now, if you're going to be working in small amounts of resin to make little things like this, it's best to get little small kinds of containers. Now, I used to use these little shot glasses for resin because they are easy to get at most of my local stores. They're extremely cheap and you can use them by putting them beside each other drawing a line with a sharpie, laying them side by side and then putting your resin up to the same level in each cup. Now you can do it with just one cup if you have a measuring scale, a digital measuring scale, you just place one cup on, you pour in your first part to a certain level, you reset your measuring scale to zero and then you pour the same amount in the same cup. But now I use silicon cups because they're reusable, I don't need to keep buying them and I don't add to the kind of plastics that are getting put into the recycling system, especially if they have residue resin in them. You'll also need some sort of measuring spoon if you want to work in small amounts if you don't have a scale. This is how I prefer to work. Instead of using little cups for measuring, I use baking spoons. I fill it with one part of my resin, scrape it into my cup, fill it with the second resin, scrape it into my cup. You'll also need some sort of mixing spoons. Now these ones are what I used to use, wooden ones. They're easy to get and disposable. But now I actually use wipe clean stirring sticks that are usually made of either plastic like this or you can get some silicon ones on eBay. So you need some sort of stirring sticks, some sort of cup, some sort of way to measure if you don't want to measure using your cup. You're going to need some sort of nail file for sanding your resin. I find these really thick nail files for beauty nail files are perfect for sanding resin. And you're going to need a mold. Now there's three types of mold. You can get these hard resin molds, these silicon semi-transparent ones, or just general rubber silicon molds. And any of these kind of molds will do. Now I also have a lighter, as you can see. You don't need a lighter necessarily, you can use a lighter, you can use a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol or a spray bottle of acetone and these are just tools to help get rid of bubbles on the surface of your resin when you start. I prefer lighters because that's how I was taught but I'm very careful with them because you can overheat your resin and actually cause it to bond 
to your silicon and instead of a lighter you can actually use a heat gun meant for crafts but yet again you have to be careful as you can bond your resin to certain silicon and I found this semi-transparent kind of silicon this white color is usually the worst culprit for resin bonding to it if you overheat it Okay, another thing you are going to need is some sort of clean up. I found that baby wipes are actually really great at cleaning up resin for taking anything off of your um, spoons, your if you get it on your hands or surfaces, baby wipes work really well, any brand. Now I would suggest that you also invest in some latex or non-latex gloves. I actually have an allergy to the gloves themselves and it doesn't matter if they're latex or non-latex I can't wear them because it is a worse reaction on my skin than just using resin so what I use is various types of barrier creams or heavy moisturizers on my hands prior to working with resin I then make sure I keep my baby wipes handy so that I can clean my hands frequently while I'm using resin just to make sure nothing stays in contact with my skin. You should also be thinking about working in a really highly ventilated area or using some sort of mask. I actually have masks but for the same reasons I can't wear gloves. I have sensitivities and prolonged use of masks on my face cause me issues so instead I work in a room that has two patio doors directly behind me and a window just to that side and all of them sit open most of the time whenever I'm using resin. Another precaution I take is that I limit the time that I work with resin. I will make very small batches, one to two pieces over the course of three days so I'm literally only using the resin in very short bursts leaving it to cure and then I will wait a week or two before I make any more. I tend not to work a lot with resin anymore because back in 2013 I think it was I used to work with polyester resin when I ran my online store and constant exposure to the resin, resin itself even though I wasn't really getting it on my skin caused me to have a saturation reaction that is when your body absorbs either through fumes or coming in contact with the uncured resin continuously and it builds up in your system and causes like an extreme allergic reaction and it affected my lungs and it affected me having headaches all the time and nausea and for an entire year I had to detox from any kind of polyester resin I couldn't go near it and now I literally very rarely work with polyester resin and I work with epoxy resin and I've never had any problems since because I am quite careful careful. These are all things you need to take into consideration especially if you, if you work in your home and you have young children who are constantly around the area that you may have resin fumes. When I'm leaving my resin to cure it is always in this room and this room has a constant airflow open window and it even though it's only one or two pieces there is still constant airflow in this room. This is not a room my children spend a lot of time in. They tend to just stay upstairs in their own rooms or come down here very rarely. So it is something to think about if you're going to be using resin. Even if the company who sells your resin claims that it is non-toxic and low odour, that does not mean no risk. Non-toxic usually means in its cured state and that it can be used for things like food or drink safe products. It doesn't mean that in its liquid state ingesting it would not cause problems. Resin in liquid state is a whole other problem in itself. Low odour does not mean no fumes, it just means no smell. So you may not have a smell from your resin but it does not mean that there are no fumes at all. So hence it's always better to sit on the side of caution using gloves and masks if you are able to well ventilated areas and limit the use that you are exposed to resins. I've heard so many horror stories for people that work with copious amounts of resins on a daily basis much like I did. I was using five kilograms a month in polyester resin for my online shop and I had a severe allergic reaction purely from exposure and I've been working with resin for over 10 years and it took a good five years before that allergic reaction actually presented itself. So always bear that in mind that is something I think everybody should be aware of. It can happen to anyone no matter how many years you have been using resin. Okay, 
So I think we've got the basics of what you will need. Your cup, some sort of stick. Another thing I want to point out is what I decant my resin into. Decanting resin, these are really sticky. These are my old bottles. Into bottles with a nozzle. It's good for two things. I have quite large ones because I used to work in large quantities of resin. But decanting your resin into small bottles with nozzle lids means you have more control when measuring your resin. But it also means that the majority of your resin, if you buy in bulk, is not being opened and closed continuously and the air getting in. And air is what causes your resin to eventually colour in yellow over time the more it's opened and closed and exposed to oxygen. So if you transfer some of your resin into a smaller bottle with a nozzle, which is gives you more control you'll have less spillage you won't need to keep opening and closing it and it will preserve the rest of your resin that you're not using for a longer period of time for example this resin here i can honestly say it's about three years old and it still works perfectly and up until recently it was in the canister that originally came in and i only decanted it to these bottles this year to finish it to finally move on to a new resin Okay, so I think we've covered the basics of what you will need, some of the risks, the basics, and now I'm going to show you how I mix up clear resin. Now, bubbles are a massive problem I've noticed with epoxy resin of many brands. Some brands are absolutely great for dispersing their own bubbles, but some resins, when they're a little bit older or they get a little bit cold, they can be quite horrendous. So I'm going to measure my resin the way I first learned to do it just pure basic if you don't have scales or you don't have measuring spoons or silicon cups this is how i started so we're going right back to basics i have had these plastic shot glasses for a long time now because i no longer use them i'm trying to cut down on my plastic wastage but you can actually reuse these glasses you can let the resin cure and peel them out or you can simply let the resin cure and just use them straight on top of the resin that is cured in the bottom of the cup if you can't get it out it just makes a new solid base so this is how i started with resin measuring two cups because my epoxy is a 50 50 which means the same exact amount of part a and the same exact amount of part b so i try and make sure my lines are pretty much the same and then i lay out my two cups now i also use reusable stirring sticks now but for this video i'm going to go back to wood because i'm going to show you these can be cleaned and reused you don't need to throw them away after every use you want your two lines facing you then you want to decide which of your resin is the thicker part now to do that is pretty simple if you have a see-through bottle like this rotate and move your resin the speed in which the liquid moves in the bottle dictates how thick your resin is. As you can see, the yellow resin is a lot faster at moving around, which means it's thinner. So I'm going to take my thicker part of the resin because this is the part that will give you the most bubbles. The thickest part is usually the worst, the worst criminal in bubble making, shall we say. I'm going to pour my resin to my line. Now I'm in Scotland. And even in the summer, it's not particularly warm here. So 99% of the time, my resin is thick. And even when it's brand new and not ha having it for many years, it's usually thick and bubbly. Now, as you can see, every time I touch a resin bottle, anything, I am cleaning my hands. And sort of two thirds into the process, every time I will reapply some sort of cream to my hands if I feel like I need it. Just always be mindful of protecting your skin and your breathing when using resin. Okay, so I take my thickest part and as you can see, it's really bubbly, it's really thick. And this is what I personally do, how I was taught. I have a microwave that I use specifically for heating up my resin. I put this little cup in there for about eight seconds for this little tiny volume. This requires knowing your microwave or your heating tool really well because you know the strength of it, how hot your resin is going to be. Basically, I heat it until I can hold this cup in my hand and it feels like hot coffee in a plastic cup. Now, that may seem alarmingly hot to you, but this is why we only heat one part, because your cool part is going to actually cool it down to a perfect working temperature. 
There are many methods to heating your resin. You can previously, before working, take your entire bottle and sit it in a bowl of boiling hot water until it comes to the desired temperature. I also have an electric wax warmer that I could set this cup on top of until it heats to the desired temperature. Or I have seen people use their heat gun in silicon cups to heat the resin to the desired temperature. I like things to be quick, simple and pretty methodical and that they will work the exact same way every time. So I microwave this for 8 seconds in a 700 watt microwave and I take it out and stir it. Then I hold it in my hand until I'm sure it feels exactly as I'm used to. I've done this for a long time so it feels like hot coffee in probably a plastic cup a bit thicker than a polystyrene cup. If it feels too hot to hold in your hand, it's too hot. Leave it aside to cool down. You should be able to hold it quite well, but it'd be like quite a, a good hand warmer. So I'm going to go and do that now and show you the difference. So right now you can see it's sort of foggy. It's got some bubbles. It's very thick. It moves quite slowly and I'm going to go and heat it up. Okay, I'm back and as you can see it's not too old for me to it's not too hot for me to hold in my hand, but I can feel that it would be like the perfect drinking temperature if it was a cup of coffee. As you can see, I've not stirred this yet and it is like water. The bubbles are pretty much gone and this is very liquidy. I'm just going to give it a stir just to make sure the heat is transferred. As you can see, it is really runny. And that is what you want. Now the problem with re preheating your resin, it cuts down the working time massively. So when I don't preheat this resin, I'm just measuring out my second part of my resin here. And we put the hot into the cold because this is more fluid and will be easier to disperse with very little waste. And you want to work quickly. You don't want this to start cooling down too fast. And you don't want it to sit too long because you have just reduced your working time from about 45 minutes to 20, if even. If you make your resin a little too hot, it may even cut it down to an even shorter time for working. So I mix it quite quick. I'm not too concerned if it does get a few bubbles because the heat will transfer through the mixed resin and they will rise when we put it in our mould. Now, you want to mix until... You can't see any traces. These are like little ribbony lines that will be through your resin. Now when you've heated your resin you don't have to be too particular about your mixing. You don't have to be too slow. You actually want to work fast when it's being preheated like this until you can see that there are no lines or ribbons or any variations in the resin that just don't look right. That look a bit murky and as soon as there is none left you can leave that cup sitting for just a few seconds. You can wipe off your stick with a baby wipe. It's quite hard with baby wipes with some of these sticks. These tend to sometimes stick in the bits of the grain. But as you can see, it's clean and usable. So we grab a mould. Now I'm just going back to this blue mould because it's clean. And this is actually, I think these are baking moulds or ice moulds. Now for clear resin... You just want to pour in. Now what I do is pour in a small amount first. I coat my mould. And this is purely for bubble removal. I'm in quite a cold area so this resin is cooling down quite quickly. Now whatever method you use for removing bubbles, do it quickly. Don't linger. That has got quite a lot of bubbles. If you're using a heat gun, use it on a cool setting. And then just to your desired just quickly if you're using acetone or alcohol in a spray bottle I would do the same thing a thin layer then your alcohol then a thin layer then your alcohol this just helps disperse the bubbles now more bubbles are going to rise over the next minute or so so we're just going to let that sit and I'm going to pour the rest of the resin into another mold while we work on this one okay as you get better with resin um, the amount of resin you make and the measurements it becomes something that you just get a, a feel for and you know how much resin to make using a scale is an advantage because you can get more precise but we're doing this as simply as possible okay 
So as you can see my resin has been sitting and some bubbles have risen to the surface and I'm just going to take my lighter and quickly get rid of them and as you can see pretty much there are no bubbles in the resin at all. I haven't lingered on my mould with my heat, I haven't needed to because my resin already was pretty bubble free and trust me this is a resin that when I mix can be extremely bubbly if I don't follow these steps and I have no bubbles here whatsoever. Okay so now we're going to put something in our clear resin. Now layering is a very important part of resin making but as this is a basic video and number one in our series we're going to go for simple which means we don't need to cure a base layer we don't need to worry about it being too thick we're going for quite sort of basic inclusions now this is the exact same process be it beads or be it thick stickers or something thick that you want to put in your resin and these are actually beads so i'm going to show you that with the same beads Okay, so I have some acrylic star beads here and I'm going to use a set of tweezers. These are reverse tweezers, but you can also use, in fact, I think I'll use these normal tweezers. Just a set of tweezers because you don't want to actually get your hands in there. And you want to pick out some of the colours that you want to place in there. I think I'm just going to go for a little bit of a rainbow. Now I always put out more than I may need, it's better to have supplies on hand that you don't use and the best trick that I have found for things, especially beads that have holes in, is to one by one, if you still had extra resin sitting, like your cup, in fact I'm going to bring that back, my extra resin, I just poured it into a mould off to the side here, keep your tissue handy in case you touch anything with resin your baby wipe you're going to take your bead and dunk it in your cup of unused resin you're going to move it all around and as you can see there are air bubbles coming out of the middle of the bead you basically want to submerge until you get rid of all those air bubbles and this is going to do two things it's going to coat your piece so there'll be no bubbles trapped in your good resin and it's going to stop any air coming out later. Now I'm going to do that with all of these. You can do this with stickers and large images too. It just makes them slide easier into your bubble free resin. And stops air bubbles. So I'm just going to chuck them in. Just roll them around. Let the resin get inside that little space where... Now you might still get air come out of beads in the centre, they are quite deep holes but a lot less if you do this step first. And again, not really touching the resin with my fingers too much and if I do touch it, I have my baby wipe handy and I already have barrier cream on. If you're using gloves, obviously you won't have to take these precautions but if you're like me and gloves are a no-go, this is a good alternative. Okay, so... Getting my, you want to place them where you want them. Just fill up your little mold. And this is the same process with stickers that I do or any images. I dip them in resin first. And as you can see, my resin is already starting to thicken because it was preheated. Just getting rid of little bits that I don't want to be in my piece because it was preheated it is making it gel up a lot faster so you need to learn to work fast if you're going to be using this method not all resin has a lot of bubbles some resins is really great at bubble removal so if you have a resin that gets rid of bubbles really quickly you really don't need to do preheat your resin I just find it works with most resins that I have used Okay, so once everything is in place, like I said, this is the exact same process if you're putting stickers in, if you are also doing dried flowers. But dried flowers, you would put a much thinner base layer of clear resin because you wouldn't want them to float too much. You really have to think about layers if you're making something with lots of little pieces that could float. 
but we will come to that in a future video when we make a more complex piece. Now that they're all in there, I'm going to run over this with my lighter ones more very quickly. I'm going to let this sit for another five minutes, run over with my lighter again, just to make sure any bubbles, I can see a couple come into the surface. And that's purely because you've been messing with the resin, pushing objects into the resin. It will still cause a few bubbles, but predominantly most of my resin is still very much bubble free. You may notice bubbles start to come out of your bead. Just keep an eye on your little piece here for the next 20 minutes. And then in 20 minutes time, when we're sure no more bubbles have risen, we can leave it to cure for another, I'd say 40 minutes. We want to leave it to cure until it's firm enough that you can touch it, but it's still a little bit sticky. And then we will come back to this. Okay, now my resin has sat for a good 20 minutes. I just check if any bubbles have risen to the surface. As you can see, there are very few bubbles at all. I don't think I need to run over with my lighter, although I do see something in my resin, just a piece of fluff that I'm going to pick out. Sometimes that happens when you're using baby wipes. Oh, there we go, got it. I'm just going to make sure my beads are pushed to where I want them. That's something you need to watch for if you're using thick layers of resin, is your pieces will float and move. You only really need to babysit them until your resin starts to thicken up. My resin still is slightly on the fluid side, but as you can see, when I'm touching the resin, it is thickening up. At this stage, it is capable of, there is a big hair in that, it is capable of holding glitter. As you can see, it is quite thick. If I'm only putting a little dusting of glitter, I can add it now. If you add your glitter when it is too liquidy, it will all float to the middle or sink. But I say there are no bubbles, so I don't need to hit this with heat anymore. And it's not too liquidy that the, the glitter is going to float to the middle too much. It's definitely not going to sink when it's at this stage of thickness. So I'm covering that in my white glitter that you can see here is behind my stars. And now I'm going to leave this to fully cure overnight. Now, I'm not adding a backing colour to this because I'm going to show you the easiest way to finish your piece and to do a backing colour is to do them both at the same time. It cuts down on the amount of layers you do. It cuts down on the thickness of your piece. So at this stage, this is something I do with all pieces that I'm going to add a backing colour to. I leave them at this stage to cure completely. The backing colour is going to be done outside of the mould. That is also when we're going to add our little bale. This is a really simple two layer process for this piece of resin. This is a really basic video. We will do more um, experienced resin pieces in future videos. So if there is anything particular you want me to go through in a video, please pop a comment below. While we're at it, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next videos in this beginner series for resin. I'm going to leave this alone for at least 12 hours this resin of mine cures in 8 to 12 hours but please always go by the packaging on your own resin excuse me i've got the hiccups go by the packaging of your own resin some resins take 24 hours to cure some might take a little bit longer and be aware that the actual temperature of your room the humidity can also alter how long it takes to cure your resin a good way to know if your resin is cured is to put your mold on your hand and press the middle bottom of your piece it won't damage the top of your piece but you'll feel if it's soft or if it's solid if it feels pretty solid underneath you can touch your resin with some tweezers and it should make a tapping noise when it's ready to be taken out of the mold mm -hmm. if in doubt leave it longer demolding something too early if you think it's cured and it isn't quite can actually leave tide waves on the piece of your resin that is when the surface is still a little bit soft and when you take it out of the mold it makes these permanent lines across your shiny piece which the only way to fix is glazing your resin and in this video we're trying to do this without any glazing because this is a shiny mold to begin with and we want it to come out like this 
without any extra effort. This is a very basic piece. So I'll see you when this is cured. Okay, it has been more than 24 hours since we put this in our mould. So now what we're going to do is unmould this. Now, this is a really old mould of mine. And unfortunately, the other day, this was actually knocked off my table. You're going to see in a minute. Down the back of my desk, I have a heater. And remember I talked about fusing your mold to your resin piece with too much heat this actually fell after it had cured down behind the heater and i had to fish it out and this is an example of fusing your mold to your resin now luckily this was after this had begun to cure so as you can see i'm managing to take it off but if this had been too much heat while it was curing, this would literally be stuck inside the resin and not coming off at all. As you can see, I've got a really shiny surface because this was after the fact that it had cured. But just bear in mind that too much heat will fuse molds to resin, as did there. And that was purely from heat after it had been cured. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to sand our edges. Now I'm not sanding them completely off because we are going to dome the back of this. I just want the edges to all be the same height, no nothing sticking out, no jaggy edges. I'm just lightly running over and then I'm just going to go around the edge just to make sure it's all nice and neat that nothing is sticking out. You just want to tidy it up, like so, and get ready for the next stage. Okay, so I'm going to give that just a little mix. I'm not being very particular or gentle. I don't care if there's bubbles in this resin. And I'm going to use some white resin paste now this is a really old jar so it is absolutely filthy i got this on ebay almost probably about six seven years ago now you need the tiniest amount possible and it is a really good paste in that it mixes up really opaque with absolute bare minimal and the only thing with using things like resin paste sometimes it can make your resin take a bit longer to cure and this one definitely does that if you use too much. So mixing up a nice opaque. And on this one, there was some glitter. So what I'm going to do is grab some white glitter. I actually think I added that after I was almost finished with the piece. But we're just going to add a little bit of glitter. You probably won't see this much because this is such an opaque colour. But you'll see it in hints. I think I've maybe got too much pace for you to see at all. Yeah, you're not going to see that. But normally if you haven't added quite as much white pigment, it is a tiny bit transparent. You sometimes see the glitter shining through. Okay, now to actually dome the resin piece. I like to grab a silicon mould. And just the flat side. And just set all my resin piece on there and this is just if i have any spillages it's not going to stick to the table now there are many ways that you can mask off you can rub vaseline all over your piece so if you get any drippage it won't adhere to your resin some people like to use masking tape and um, some people like to use liquid latex to cover their edges i've done this for a long time I know as long as I am careful, I will be fine. So what I like to do to start with is put a generous amount in the middle. And this is why it's good to have this slightly thicker when you're doming. And then I use that to work to the edges. Just scrape it to the edges, working with a thinner layer until you get it all spread out 
is a far easier way to work with resin. And this is how I dome all pieces. I start with a layer in the middle that's just enough to reach all the edges. Spread it out. And as you notice, because we never completely sanded that lip off, it is actually containing the resin. And then we take what is left of our resin and we pour it in the middle. Because resin self levels, it will find its way to the edges without us having to do anything at all. Now you don't want to make it too thick because it will start to tip over your edges if you've made too much resin. So you just want to cover your back with just a, a semi thick layer until things like this are no longer showing through. I've done this for a while so I made the right amount of resin for this piece. It's a good thing about using medicine spoons or um, baking spoons, sorry, is you get to know the amounts of resin you mix up in each size and you have less wastage because you're mixing up less resin. Now that looks pretty good. I've got everything covered. A nice layer. It's not too thick a layer that's going to come over the edges. And just as a final measure, I'm just going to take my lighter across it. You can do this with a heat gun, you can do it with your alcohol spray and that just takes any surface bubbles away and it helps the resin move to the edges a little bit more. I'm going to have some texture rise into the surface, the glitter that I mixed in, some of it has risen, I can see it a little bit on the surface here. When I move it around, when it's cured you'll probably see it. Now I'm going to leave this for about an hour. And then I'm going to come back and test it and see. I want the surface to be quite firm, but still, when I use a lighter on it, go a little bit liquidy. So I'm not looking for it to be fully cured. I want it to be that I can nestle my bale on top of this without it sinking down and like coming over the edges. I don't want it as fluid. I'm wanting it maybe about an hour in. So when that's been about an hour, I will come back to this and we will do the final step, which is putting our bale on. So I'll come back to that soon. Okay, so I came back to my resin piece here now that it has been about an hour and your resin should be really thick, but still a little bit tacky. As you can see here, I can nestle this bezel right down into the resin. The resin is still soft and I can position it just being very careful. As you can see when I touched my thumb on the edge, the resin is still soft enough that you can cause it to pull away and move around. This is the stage you want to be able to add your bezel. You want to nestle it in there. And once you get it in position, I found it quite difficult because my camera was in the way. I couldn't look down directly on my piece. So I do end up moving it a little bit. But once you do this, you want to bring your lighter back over. Just run over this to re-liquify your resin as I'm doing here. And what that will do, that will smooth off any areas that you may have touched, any indentations, and bring the resin back around your bezel, securely sealing it in there. So that is how I apply my bezels. I always do it at this stage, whether it be a brooch back, a bezel, a bale, or anything like an earring post I tend to always do it at this stage and then just run over with your lighter and any little strays and threads from touching the resin will suck back in redome your piece and make it look perfect okay so it's been um, overnight and as you can see we have finished and cured our piece and it's a little bit duller than this one that's purely because it's a really old mold and it has lost some of this lovely shine and the reason it looks a little bit different is the beads make a massive difference to how the piece turns out but as you can see we have the glitter has all risen to the surface that's why it looks a little bit uneven our bezel is really secured in there we have a nice neat finished off piece of resin and this is to the standard where you could turn it into a key ring or a really chunky necklace and give it to someone and it is a decent finish. So that is how we take the first steps in making resin and make something really simple and really finished. 
so that you can actually gift it to someone in just a few simple steps. In the next videos, I hope to go more into layering resin, maybe polishing and sanding resin. If you just leave some comments below as to the types of video you would like to see next in this new resin beginner series, I will happily get on that. The next video I'll be putting up will probably be the video for Let's Resin, where I'll be using alcohol inks and embedding some fairy lights into a very big mould. And I hope to see you again very soon. I'm sorry for the delay. I've just been a little unwell this last couple of weeks and had a lot going on. I would love to see you subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment below with what you would like to see in the next Resin Beginner tutorial.